At the beginning of this year, we did a big site redesign and added a bunch of functionality that I think back in 09 and last year we didn't have. Okay. Um, and it's something that still remains in focus as we continue to grow, that it's never good enough. Um, so it's, it's nice to have, and I'm glad, that, uh, I'm glad that we have it now. I think we tried to add elements to that people would come to our website, maybe even if they weren't pregnant, and also if they were pregnant, there'd be a reason to come back other than just shopping. Um, otherwise, it was a very functional e-commerce site, but it was nothing more. So people would be unable to feel a part of a community. So we, it's difficult to create that, um, especially without a price tag associated with it. But I think with uh, the Mommy IQ um, and a section called Ask the Experts, we were able to do that. It's a lot, but it's, it's without doubt one of the most popular things for people. Like they want the content and we want to be able to give it because we want them to be able to really experience who we are um, and be on the show, get to know us and get to know um, all the services we can offer them and how we can help them with the whole process of parenting. But it does mean being available through content all the time. Like you can't just dabble in a blog post, no. you know, and that certainly <laughs> is difficult. Um, I find myself like tweeting and blogging throughout the day and it, it takes me a while to like accrue the content within a blog, but I'll be doing it constantly on my library. I don't know if it's marketing more so than it's just the way that the brand is growing. And I think we're very um, acutely aware of what people think, what they want, and I think we're pretty good at responding to it real time versus um, having some kind of clear intent on becoming a publisher. Or I think it's just it's our strategy to listen and cater to what people want. I think just as much as we felt there was something missing from the maternity clothing market, I think we felt equally there was something missing from um, the educational and support system that's available to people, and it's difficult to have that uniquely in a studio in Manhattan. You need to be able to somehow translate that onto the website, um, and that I think ultimately what we're trying to do so we can get many services to people instead of just being a fashion line. The challenge with any new business is letting people know that you exist. And it's the biggest thing that is, you know, it's the sort of notion that you are like advertise everywhere or tell everybody. It just, it just takes time to saturate. So I think with Mom Prep, we were lucky because we have a customer base from the store. So that certainly made it easier. But we've always wanted to, our studios and our stores to be together. And they, they weren't together. So that has been a challenge because you want them to get, experience the brand as a whole as opposed to in two different pieces. Um, and even though they're very close, those three blocks might as well be 30. So I think that's something that you have to sort of overcome. Um, and we've done I mean, a lot of things, especially in the store, to make people aware of Mom Prep, um, and then try and feed them back to the store. But ultimately, every future studio will be in the store. So that's not really a permanent issue. And I think digitally speaking, as the popularity of the maternity store online grew, uh, at the same time we were growing our digital offerings for example, our YouTube videos, that are all uh, up and being viewed. And so I think you know, there are a lot of things that I think conceptually we tried to recreate, not just in the brick and mortar operations, but also online.